Hi everyone, welcome to Ask Wardy. Hi Periscope friends, Facebook friends. If you're on Facebook, uh, check the comments. Millie's right there pasting links and whatnot. What we're talking about today are ferments. I have here kefir and sauerkraut. And did you know that if you do everything right, organic veggies, clean veggies, clean containers, clean utensils and all that, that you can still have um, weird results. Yes, you can, and that's if you have your ferments not spaced far enough apart. So if they're too close together and they're different kinds, they can mess each other up. So today on Ask Wardy, we are talking about how far apart do you need to safely space your ferments to avoid cross-contamination. It's a great topic, and it's going to add just a little bit more to your skill set so that you can turn out wonderful ferments over and over without issue. Okay, so we're going to get into that. Let me welcome you to Ask Wardy. This is the weekly show where I answer your questions about traditional cooking. It happens same time, same place, every Wednesday. You can check out the recording, links, and transcript anytime at AskWardy.tv. This is episode number 89. So if you have to run, if you don't want to sit through um, the details here, watch or listen, just run over there right now and check out the notes because it's all ready for you. So here we go. This is a question from Lori D. She says, I'm newer to fermenting, but absolutely loving it. I've learned so much from you. I've heard you say a few times that you need to keep your ferment separated by four feet. I think that's right. I would love to know more about this. I don't have a very big kitchen, so keeping my water kefir away from my kombucha and sauerkraut is getting challenging. Would a shelving system be okay to keep them separated or is that not enough space? Thank you so much. May God richly bless you. Thank you so much, Lori, and God bless you as well. Well, here we go, let's get into it. Um, my rule on spacing apart ferments is the five foot rule. Four is close. So yes, you do need to keep your different types of ferments four to five feet apart. This avoids cross contamination. Um, now, what is cross contamination? Well, here's a jar of kefir, and if you could just imagine, it's kind of funny to picture it, but you know, this is a cloth lid, and there's yeast and bacteria here culturing this, this milk into kefir. And if you could just imagine, there's this cloud of organisms kind of around it, and if it's next to something else, it also has a cloud of microorganisms around it. And so you have these microorganisms that are just hopping from jar to jar. They're sharing vessels. I know it's kind of funny to imagine, but that's how I picture it. And we have actually in our home had a sourdough starter, um, one of mine, next to one of my daughters, and um, mine took a nosedive and then had to bounce back, and it was all because of sharing organisms, those yeast and bacteria that were hopping from jar to jar. This is called cross-contamination, and sometimes it's a problem like when you have different kind of ferments. For instance, if you're making cheese or culturing dairy and you have a sourdough starter nearby, your cheese, instead of making nice smooth curbs, curds, could get all fluffy and actually billow up and get really grainy and fluffy and not have the texture of the cheese that you want. Um, you can get yeasty smelling or alcoholic smelling vegetable ferments, um, even tasting if they're too close to a culture that has yeast. So it can be a problem, so it's really important to avoid that cross-contamination. Types of ferments is very important, so the four to five foot rule applies to ferments and types, like fruits and vegetable ferments. Keep them separate from your other kinds, but fruits and veggies can go together. Um, I mean, if, if you're doing like a lacto-fermentation, if you're taking fruits and you're going into a vinegar fermentation or an alcoholic fermentation, that changes the type. Um, dairy or water kefir, cheese, sourdough starter or souring doughs, kombucha, alcohol, vinegar, those are all the different types that need to be spaced four to five feet apart. Um, if you have two ferments of the same type, like let's say you're doing pickles and you're doing sauerkraut from your garden veggies, those are the same type, they can go close together. That should make sense, I hope. Um, you can keep different, sou different souring doughs together. Um, the, and it's, 
it can happen that they will share cultures, but the results are not usually as disappointing as if you had sourdough starter by your cheese. In my last example, which happened to me, one day I was making cheese and I was like, what in the world is wrong? These curds are not smooth and solid. It was just a billowy, pillowy, puffy, grainy mess. And it's because the sourdough starter was too nearby and yeast had gotten into my cheese that was forming curds and the yeast ruined it. So you may have okay results when you have types together and you would have disappointing results if you have differing types together. Make sense? Um, I'm gonna stop for a moment and invite you all to grab my free fermenting formulas cheat sheet. Um, it's a couple page document where I go through formulas of different kinds of ferments that are um, just the formulas. If you need this much vegetables, this much salt, this much starter culture if you're using it, use this size jar and this much time. So beverages, salsas, krauts, relishes, all kinds of different ferments, a cheat sheet that gives you the formulas. You can get that at tradcookschool.com slash ferment sheet if you haven't already or look for a link with this video recording. Okay, so what if you have, don't have enough room though? Lori is saying she has a smallish kitchen. She's wondering if a shelving unit would be okay. Well, here's the thing. Um, lots of people have this challenge and your shelving system, I don't know the dimensions of it, but if it's tall enough so that the top shelf is four to five feet away from the bottom shelf, you might be okay. If it's not that tall, it's probably not a good solution. Here's what I suggest for you or anyone else that's in a smaller space. First of all, space ferments as far apart as you can, okay? The rule, the five foot rule, who came up with five feet? Maybe it's two and a half for a certain ferment. Maybe it's 10. Well, you wanna do the best you can, okay? Uh, you also might choose to do um, like, if you're making cheese, put the sourdough starter away for the day or two and so on. Um, Never though, <laughs> never keep your sourdough starter near other ferments, especially cheese or other culturing dairy. This has been the strongest cross-contamination issue I've encountered in my kitchen, and that's why I say it so strongly to you. Sourdough starter can really mess up those other ferments, so do it on different days and never keep them close. Um, you might consider moving ferments into another room. So if your kitchen is adjacent to your dining room or living room, well, why not put a pretty shelf of beautiful culturing veggies in your dining room or your living room. It can become an interesting temporary decor, a great conversation starter, and just a reminder in other rooms of the beautiful things you have cooking in your kitchen. Uh, so be creative that way. You can use other rooms in your house. In our home currently, the kitchen is large enough and there's kind of like three corners. So I have one corner with um, culturing dairy, another corner with kombucha, and another corner with sourdough starter. And then the island is kind of far enough away from all of those corners. And so if I was doing fermented veggies like sauerkraut or pickles, I do those on the island. So it keeps everything kind of far apart. Our previous home, small kitchen. So I spread, I, I could, across the kitchen I could spread maybe two things, but I often move stuff into the dining room and even into the family room where the fireplace was there to keep things warm. Um, I just had to spread out because that's how we made it work. So get creative. If you don't have enough space, other rooms are fine. Okay, so this has been a short Ask Wardy, but there's really not much to say. Keep your types separated four to five feet. Do the best you can. Get creative and go to other rooms. If you have cultures that are in the same type, like dairy or vegetable ferments, those can be slow, those can be closer together. All right, so again, grab the free fermenting formulas cheat sheet that I have as a gift for you, tradcookschool.com slash ferment sheet. It'll give you a lot more basics of fermentation as well as those formulas I told you about. Everything's tried and true and safe and you can kind of go with what's in season or what your garden is producing to come up with great recipes because you know the formulas. So grab that if you haven't already. There's a link with this video. Um, I love your questions for Ask Wardy. I love that you keep coming back, so please do. Join me same time every Wednesday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern for this fun that we have and the recordings, um, audio, video, and the print are always ready for you at askwardy.tv. Uh, that'll take you to the archives there so you can browse and catch up on past or look at today's notes. 
Um, if you want to submit a question, I'd love to add it to the queue. Uh, there's instructions at AskWardy.tv, or all you have to do is send me an email, Wardy, W-A-R-D-E-E, -E, at AskWardy.tv. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks, everyone, so much for being here. God bless you. Bye-bye.